Hey everyone, welcome into the garage. For those of you coming back, thanks for stopping in. Those of you guys are new, ladies and gentlemen, LT2000, Craftsman. Craftsman. Uh, what do I know about it? Not much. My buddy Juan uh, went out and got it for me uh, like last year. What's up, Juan? Thanks. And a lot of times my buddy Mikey does that too. Um, what's up, Mike? Beyond that, I don't know. Right? I struck a deal with the dude. I got it for a good price. It wasn't running, or it isn't running. And uh, it was pretty dirty. We got it back here sometime last year. I went over it. I'll show you some footage of what it looked like when I got it. Um, got it cleaned up a little bit. There was oil all over the front, right? We've got to take this cover off. You see, it looks like it's in overall good shape. It's black, too. It's pretty sweet with it. It would be nice if we get it all cleaned up. So there was oil all over it. And, uh, and then I kind of have an idea. We'll get in there and I'll show you. I think it needs a motor. And my daughter the other day, you know, before we pushed it in here, we just because it was just covered in like shop dust from sitting, so she washed it off for me. Thank you, T. Right, that's the, the the love of my life, my daughter. Right, she's just awesome. I got the greatest kid on the planet. Um, <clears throat> and we got up in here, and now it's time to dig in. And like I said, I think it's gonna meet, need a motor, and let's go in and find out why I say that. Stand by. So I took some of this stuff off to get in here and give it a good cleaning. And she's nice and clean. That all looks good. But what we see here, look at that. That's RTV. And that's a lot of RTV. And it's so bad. Somebody did such a terrible job. Way too much. So if it's coming on the outside of the motor, oh my God, what's in there, right? That's why you don't do that. Um, because it gets inside the motor and, and you can block passages and get between things and it'll just wreak havoc. And unlike some of the other products that we use, like Gorilla Snot, whatever, it can't break down. You just, it just, what a nightmare. So not, it's probably leaking, right? Because I saw oil all over it and I don't know if you're going to see some shots of it. I didn't go over that footage. I haven't gone over it in a while. If not, I'll try to put it somewhere in here um, if, I, if I find it and it looks good to put up i'll show you that how much oil was just dressing everything down so good chance that's leaking good chance it also caused some damage on the inside of the motor um i don't think i got any water in it or anything because like i tried to protect it while i was washing it um, it's got some fuel in it it's old fuel i say we drain that out we connect the battery to it and um I'm willing to bet there's probably some water in it yeah it might be it might run just like that um so why don't we throw a battery in it real quick and spin it over and see if it drinks any of that because it's that's already in here so i don't know how much worse it's going to get we'll check spark and everything but it doesn't look like any nieces got to it so i don't see any damage up here or anything from from the nieces uh yeah let me go get a battery i got to charge battery go throw it in and see what comes of it i'll be right back i'm just going to spend a minute <laughs> A little sandpaper, a little crocus cloth or something. You know, because all of this is all new to us. I also see, as I'm doing this, I'm inspecting. Got one bolt for the seat slider, but the other two are missing. So now's our chance to get, you know, intimate with it. Oh! Anyway, nice choice of words, right? I know, that's Arch. That's what he, he's, he's not normal. Who's Arch talking to right now? Okay, good common practice is to put the positive on first. Why? Because as I'm tightening it, right, if I hit that and it was live, you know, if it was already grounded, you'd be shorting that out. So, I don't want to do that. Okay, I got to figure it out. <clears throat> I don't know what this is. Somebody must have been a little short or something. It looks like it was an electrical box. Pretty good idea. So you press this down all the way, and then there's this handle over here, which I'll show you in a bit, but that goes down, there's an interlock switch there, then you throw this lever down, this red lever down, and it holds it. The other side is your speed control, which is kind of neat, having your speed controller, or sort of your ground speed controller on a pedal. Uh, that's nice, we're in neutral over here, we're gonna put it to choke, and let's just see if she cranks. Oh, here's something, okay. So, since we hear something over back here, that means we got a relay kicking in, but nothing up front. 
So I'm going to go get uh, our ohmmeter and we'll check for voltage. All right, I got my cheesy test light. I just made one out of a simple bulb and a socket. Um, I had a better one, but I broke it. So we're going to just clamp it. We'll jet clamp it over here on something. We just need to find a spot, someplace clean. Could even be this on the motor, right? We'll see. That's pretty clean. And then we'll leave our bulb someplace where we can get to it. Well, we can see it. I'll see it, but I want you guys to see it. All right, and then we'll turn the key. All right, so we're going right here to the starter motor. Okay, no voltage there. So what we want to do is take, this is our, this is our positive run coming from that. That's a, a starter relay. It's a solenoid, solenoid. And we're going to take this off here so that we can test it. Uh, as we play around back there, and we want to check to make sure that this wire is connected and that that starter relay is okay. We're gonna go find it, but we know we're not getting anything over here, so we're not gonna we're not gonna say that the uh, starter motor is no good. Geez, it looks awfully clean, right? This machine's not old; it's actually in pretty good shape. All right, I gotta go find that thing. Let's go find it. All right, you see that? Look. The nut fell off. There's the solenoid down there. Um, trying to get you a better view. See it? I'm tapping it with the wrench. And down there is where the B positive is supposed to connect to on that lug. And there's the cable, right, with the eyelet ring. So when you clean that off, find a nut for that. It might have just fallen off. Or maybe somebody was working on it and they, you know, somebody was on this thing, so they didn't reconnect it. I don't know, but let's put that back. All right, so that's a problem. All right, now what we want to do now, it's got some power to it, so we're going to lubricate the starter, but we want to pull the plug because she could be hydro locked with water. Or something's jammed up so that's what we're going to do next let me get that plug out now, it wasn't particularly tight but it was a little difficult coming out even though the threads are all coated with a lot of oil and she's carbon fouled we'll check spark in a minute let's get some lubricant we'll get oil on all of this what it just drews in oil's your best bet for stuff like this um, you could try a penetrant, but I don't think it needs it. Start off with a little bit of oil. All right, let's spin it over and see what it does. If it starts to puke, I got a rag here. It might. Move this out of the way. Let's just see if she'll spin in a natural way. Now, before we go to put anything else to it. Let's see how it feels. Battery might need a bit more charge. Well, she's spinning. What's that sound? Sounds like the belt. All right, let's give it a kick over. All right, we don't hear any weird noises. Let's check compression. We might want to put a charger on that battery. Now I got a different plug. A much better one too. Same kind of plug, basically the same. So we may try to start it with this better plug. That's a Briggs plug and what was in there was a first fire. FF-20. What is that, the Chinese? First let's see if we have any spark. I'll yell it out. All right, we got spark. Plenty of it. Put a little two stroke up in this hole. Let's we'll see if we can get some in there. I gotta mix up some more. All right. And then the gauge will help push it around, loosen things up a little bit. Might want to make up some more of my tranny fluid mix too. I gotta make some more of that anyway. So we'll put some of that in there too. Put the old plug in and try to push it around, loosen some stuff up. All right, let's see what we got. Let's see if it'll spin it. 
probably going to see glare. Oh, we're good. Oh, 150 pounds. That's nice. That's kind of a lot. But we don't know if the ACR is coming off. Let me throw our test plug in. I'll gap it, put a little bit of no seize on it. We'll put it back, and then we'll try dribbling some fuel down. It'll be right there. All right, let's put a little two-stroke down the carburetor, and there's a little bit still, still probably in the cylinder. And it looks like there's, I think it's wet in here. Could be old gas. Yeah, she stinks. It might be too much fuel sitting around in here. All right, so choke. We'll take the choke off a little. Yeah, let's take that choke off a little bit. Let it breathe. We've had the choke on enough, so it's probably trying to pull. Uh-oh. Yeah, let me stand back. That's way too much. That muffler is full of oil, and the question is why. Let's let it smoke out, and we'll talk about that. All right, I let it run for quite some time. We got it real hot. In fact, I've been letting it cool for a while, and it's still a little hot. Um, so we know it's smoking. The question is why, right? And notice when I revved it up, more smoke came out. Now, is that just because there's so much smoke bellowed up inside the muffler? from all the oil, because it was all over. The oil was all over that muffler at one point. And is it still laying down in there and we're percolating it? It's cool to the touch now. This is still very, well, it's quite warm. I wouldn't want to leave my hand on it. Um, we don't know if it's pumping smoke out. The oil is beat, I can tell you that, it's black. And there's all kinds of gook around here. It's full of like black silt. Um, this, it's got nastiness all over it. We want to clean that dipstick tube. Uh, I don't know what to say. It feels like it's still lubricating. We could treat it as they treat any other motor, right? Pull this cover off because it's probably never been adjusted. And if it was adjusted, there's there is sealant in here. It doesn't look like, fa well, it could be factory sealant, it's gray. This is all blue sealant, and I don't know how far around they went. Did they take the motor off, go in here and fix something? We just don't know. It sounds okay, although I hear a little something, I don't know if you guys hear it. it starts right up, but the battery might be a little weak, but it gets this sort of compression thing going. It could just be because of all the fuel that was going in it. And right there, it's a little tough. So let's just see if she starts right up real quick, just for a second. Just on low. I'm not going to touch anything. So she seems to run well. Let me take this off. Pull the plug. We'll take this off. We'll pull the ignition off. We'll go over the ignition. I'll pull the carburetor. We'll dump the tank. I see dirt in the bottom of the tank. We'll clean the car right. We'll get all that back together. Maybe we'll even do a, a fluid change on it, get all the oil out of it, and uh, and put it all back together because she's running pretty good. If the leak has stopped, and I'm not seeing any new leaks, but you know we got to run it. Maybe even cut the lawn. It needs a belt. I see when I was in there poking around in the uh, solenoid, there's a belt on one of the drives. It's just a small belt, but it's one of the tranny belts. Um, let's just determine if we have, you know, we'll, if we have a good motor. I mean, the carburetor seems to work good. Look, that took a little damage there. Somebody hit that. Uh, we have a lot to work with here. At the very least, it's got some great parts and the body's in good shape. So yeah, let me pull this next and we'll take a peek in there. I'll come back in a minute and let you know what I find. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. For sure. Right? Somebody... This might be what's leaking. And look. Oh. Hold on. I'm getting cold. All right. I got to get to this now. So all that gook in there. Anyway, we're going to clean this out. Here's the mistake people make with these things. Um, that, that gasket did nothing. Right? Except go inside the motor like the other one. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean this off, make sure it's flat and true. You over-tightened it, too. And so by over-tightening, you're, you're pushing everything out and in and nowhere where it needs to be. So the first step is we're going to clean all this off, get all this gook off, clean it off good, no grease on it, no remnants. Make sure it's flat and straight. And then I'm going to lay a bead down. I only have the high temp red stuff. i got to get more of the black. I keep forgetting um, I had a hard time finding it for a little while. I think it's around again. Anyway, we're going to lay a bead down, a light bead, with my finger, and I'll show you. And then we're going to set it to dry for about a half hour or more, depending on how long we take doing other things. All right? It's got to skin. If it doesn't skin up, this, when it starts to skim, that becomes your gasket. Soft, but... And then when you put it on, you, you don't over-tighten it. You, you snug it. And best thing to do is to come back the next day and, you know, finish it up. Just, you know, tighten it a little bit more. Snug it, right? You're not, this guy had the thing, yeah. So don't do, don't do, don't be this guy, right? He was almost there. Apparently, you know, somebody knew something, but this is how you get into trouble. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, see, this is what I worry about, right? I can see one here. This is gasket material. Let me get that little rag. We're dripping back on the exhaust again. I'm trying to avoid that. So this is gasket material. That's what I'm worried about. And there's more in here. This is like liquid. Yuck. Oh, this is really, this stuff is really soupy, guys. Let me get in there and get that out. I think we're going to dump the oil right now. While it's still a little bit warm. All right, I checked over the valves. Uh, so I think what's happening is, I mean, I even found RTV up here, right, on the rocker arm. So this is what it looks like, um, valve cover looks like with just a light bead. Now it's been sitting drying, it's got to skin up. And without that skin, it's that skin, like you could put this, you could never really get a good successful seal by putting RTV on, putting this cover on, and then over tight, you know, slamming the bolts down. That's never going to work. So what I do is I get, like I said, I get everything clean, super, super clean, and I lay a nice bead on with my finger. If you see any area that looks a little translucent, like like you can see a spot where like the cover is come, showing through, a little bit more on, get a nice even coat. Put it aside for about a half hour. Today is really warm. It's really hot day and dry. So this did not take long. There's just no good way to get the oil out. Let's get the oil out. Just let it start draining while it's still warm. Yeah, there's just no good way. Can we slip something underneath that? Yeah, let me see if I have like a little plastic container or something. All right, this is a contraption I made uh, from just a tin tray. And uh, so I just kind of make a, b a border around it. And let's, let's hope it works. Well, it's kind of working. Just keep an eye on it for a minute. Look, not no real rainbows or anything in it, but it's just so black and thin. There's some metal in it. You know, you always see some. There's no filter on this motor. All right, let's get rid of that. I'll get the rest of it out. It, it needs oil. This could be part of the smoking issue. It's so thin and just done. All right, clean that off. And now let's clean that off. All right now we'll get some oil in. I also clean this up a little bit of gas or solvent or whatever, but it gets a lot of the fading off and everything. And we'll, we'll deal with that later. We'll make it pretty, you'll see. All right, I'm just going to add a little 80, 90 gear lube to this. That sulfur will help it. It'll make it a little bit thicker. And if need be, I have some um, 
Lucas product too, which I'll show you. I'm gonna leave leave it a little bit low, and then if I need to add the Lucas, I'll have some room. So let's get started with this. All right, I want to show you guys how somebody been monkeying with this machine. See, somebody cut this extra brace here. See it? It's all sharp and nasty and jagged. I'm thinking somebody put a motor in it. And then somebody cut that up there. You see that s slot cut out of it? I don't know why they would have done that, but <clears throat> there must have been a different motor in it. And somebody put this motor in. All right, just a couple of spots. Now to start off with, we'll get this cable and the slider. And there's probably a little bit, something back here we can get. And we're gonna come up here. We're gonna get you and you and this guy. It's pretty clean. And then one thing I'd like to do is reach up in here, pull this off, right, and clean that out, blow it out, and then spray, put some spray lube in it. Look how dirty it is. That makes for contact issues. And then down here, we may not be able to see it, but we'll try it from the other side too. We're going to get some spray lube on that and some grease, right? You might be able to see a little bit better over there. So a little bit of grease wiped on that, a little spray lube into that bushing, and I think we'll be good to go. Now we need to check. You see this wire here? That doesn't look good. I don't know what's going on with that, so we want to look into this. I don't know what's going on. We'll open that up, and then we'll put the tank back. All right, that should work. So I replaced that fuel filter, which is really the wrong one. You don't want to use one of these if there's no fuel pump. And that may have even been the problem with it because it can cause starvation, fuel starvation, uh, to the, these carburetors. These are just gravity fed. And then, of course, as the fuel drops down, um, you can really have a problem. So there's already a screen in here. And then this is just a screen style. And generally, this is what's recommended. So we're going to leave it at that. Like I said, that could have been the, the initial issue. Again, especially as that fuel dropped, because look at the height. There's not much of a difference, right? Everything looks real good. We got to pop this back on. See, that just got to go in through one of those holes. I'll do that in a minute. I'm just going to put some chain wax on a few spots. Everything looks good. The only thing I don't like is this here, where that, yeah, that, that looks, this belt almost looks like it should be on the other side of that, but I think this moves out of the way, because that's a, an idler pulley. See, a lot of this is in the relaxed mode right now. You can see it over here. I showed you that up top, but I don't see wear on the belt. So if that was really rubbing all the time, there'd be wear on the belt. See, this is the braking system with the dual pulleys. I'm just gonna shoot everything with some wax, especially up in this area here. We'll get what we can. Start off with over here. Now this is the disc brake, so you don't wanna get anything on there, but these are the, this is what moves on a cam so we want to make sure we get that part and this is the cable system and we get a little bit on there it's no problem and this is your shifter so we want to make sure we get something on that and then same thing up in here right this all moves and now this guy moves down in here okay This moves, right? Same thing on the other side. That looks pretty good. Now 
this we can get up in there. Right, we can get it from inside on the side of it. We'll get a few things when it's up on the table. Just a good inspection. Here, let me show you this. Right, we'll get a little bit up in here. This piece moves. Don't worry about getting a little bit on the belts. Not gonna hurt nothing. And we'll get this guy here. This whole thing moves. That's good enough. Anything else? This moves. I think that's it. Everything looks good. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to let it down. Um, what I am going to do now is we'll lube up the front end while it's over here. I'll show you. We'll get the grease gun. We'll go here. Um, that's one spot. If you wanted to, you could shoot oil down into there. All right? That's not a bad thing to do. That's to pivot. But yeah, there and... should be a spot to grease the tires, but I'm not seeing it. You see anything? No. Usually there's one on there. We may have to take the tires off. Oh, no. There's one right here. Right, there's a grease fitting right there. So we'll get that. And I think that's about it. We'll hit this spot with some chain wax. I think I got that from the inside. I'll get it from the outside now. And anything else I can see. All right, that grease fitting's a wash. There's no way to really get grease in it. You can't get the tool in. I even have a right angle, but you can't. You can't get it in there. The, you really gotta take this off, which, you know, that's stupid. It should have gone back here where there's, it would have gotten better penetration and not just filled the cap. Yeah, but they didn't do that. Give this thing a, a little test. Been a couple of days, could have been busy. Oh, this, this seat's real comfortable. Wow. Seat got back support. What's with that? She's running real sweet. Let's go inside and take a look at a few more things. I just want to take a quick look. I'm starting to clean everything up. I got oil in it. I just topped it off. So, and I put a little bit of the Lucas product in, a little bit thicker. And uh, also on the other side, I'll show you, I put a, a fuel cutoff switch. And I'll explain why. 
in a minute. Sorry, I got fans on and everything. It's hot. I just want to see what the heck this is. All right, so this this is uh this must have been yeah. See, look at that. This must have been a pin that went in there. Probably for, because it's a different motor, it might have had something a little bit different. Looks like this might be a ground. It's black. Okay. Goes in there. Probably a ground. Comes over to the ignition, it looks like. So it's probably your ignition kill. I should have checked this while the top was off. And I guess, my guess is, is that this mole, I look at all the grease packed in there. This Molex connector died and the guy couldn't replace it. And so he just did this. So it, okay, I get it. You wanted to use the Molex that was in there. It's nice and tight. We're going to put a butt splice in. See, even this butt splice, right? So it's just wrapped around. That shouldn't be like that. And what kind of butt splice is this? That's not very good, is it? We'll tape that up. I think maybe we'll take this off and that we, we can put it on, two of these on properly. So we'll make another nice splice here. Let me clean all that off and I'll show you what I want to do in a minute. Fix that. That's no good. That is a bad connection. And you'll have a problem shutting the engine off. Also, it's part of the, probably part of the generator pack. Although that might be down here. Yeah, that looks like that's down here. And it looks like somebody did something down here. There's a diode in there usually. And uh, so that looks like it's okay. Let's service that. Let's fix that properly. All right, so I did that wire. I pulled this apart. There's all kinds of trash and oil in there. I put a little bit of my degreaser in it and uh, ran that in there. Blew it out with compressed air. There's still a lot of trash in this, so we're gonna clean it with some brake cleaner, which is basically the same thing as electrical contact cleaner. And then blow that through as well. And then we can splice it. Yeah, there's a lot of trash in these guys. It's much better now. <clears throat> And then we can clamp it up. Nasty. You know, there's details, right? A lot of people, especially with electrical, a lot of mechanics don't do electrical. It's a whole nother art and science. That's even got trash on it, too. I wonder how much trash is in here. Yeah, there's plenty of trash in that as well. You know, that's a, that's, you always want to clean your connectors. So we'll take a bit of chain wax, just a little bit. And this, you could use a, a different type of dielectric, but why stock so many different things? Just a tiny little bit. And that'll, that'll protect it. We'll do this side too. Because that'll, it's liquid going in, but that's what I like about this stuff. It's basically like a liquid going down. So it acts like a, like a penetrant lube. But then she's gonna wax up. All right, that's nice and proper. A couple of tie wraps, everything cleaned up. A double, single tape all the way up to here and then a double tape just over this area just to complete it and make it a little bit tighter. Uh, I never liked the way the ends of these tapes, I want to get me some electrical, like uh, liquid electric tape. Uh, that way you can, you can dress the ends of the tape so they don't come unraveled. That just bothers me. Uh, and that tape's getting a little old too. But it's all nice and protected, it's up out of the way. Uh, nothing going on here. Everything should be good. I'm gonna just maybe put a little oil in that, a little spray lube. Especially out here, a little chain wax. Oh, up in that. Can you see that? Yeah, that's good. 
open it down in here, which is just a, a bushing over there. Yeah, that's good. And we already got this. We do believe we got that the other day. All right, I see that completes it. All right, so I put in a uh, kill switch over here, you know, fuel shut off, fuel kill. Um, and I did that because I don't trust these electric solenoid operated fuel shut offs. Um, if junk gets in the tank, mostly from the alcohol and the gas attacking, you know, the carburetor and a bit of junk, it gets stuck open and maybe the float gets a little stuck. And there's a lot of uh, fuel, this, this holds quite a bit of fuel. And it's pretty high up, so if you have a full tank or a half a tank of gas, um, it's you know it's high up, and it's enough that that pressure will definitely work its way in and overfill into the engine, and then you could have hydrolock or if it's just a little bit and it actually starts and runs, um, then the guy will be running, the person will be running the machine with gasoline in the oil and it'll kill the motor and I wouldn't be surprised that that may have even been what killed the motor originally um, I just don't like all that RTV so that could be a problem nice thing to do is at the end of the year right maybe give it a rinse or whatever put a little st uh, stable in the fuel I don't know do your thing with it run it for a little bit get your sort of last cut in and then before you put it away, just shut that off and you're good to go. Um, and you won't have any issues. Um, so cheap insurance, guys. Um, you know, leave a comment about that if other, you know, some of you people know or have had bad experiences uh, with some of this stuff. I, I've heard about it. I, I haven't had a bad experience. I just have seen bad motors and I've seen bad carburetors and I've seen these with issues. So... And I've heard about it. So I thought, you know what, such a nice machine. Let's just put that in. All right, there's the hood. But I'm having a problem getting it on. And so I even bent these tangs out a little bit. They got to come out more. Just the top part. But it's really, the issue is in here. Something happened. So I got my little jack. And I just got to find something to crank it. This seems to be doing fine. It's the screwdriver. Just gonna give it a good push. Oh, I think I'm at the end of my. Am I at the end of my rope? Nope, I'm stuck. There we go. We'll push a little bit more. It's going. All right, let's see what that does. It goes on no problem now. I just had to finesse it a little bit, right? Just to you know adjust it. I think it's because it took a little bit of a hit here. I gave the inner, the innards, a good cleaning. I just want to mention you guys, uh, so this chart here, which you can't read, unless I turn the camera, but I'm not going to turn the camera, but you could see it. All right, that's, that's everything you need to know about it, and belt sizes and what have you. So whenever you need something for this machine, you know, check that chart, and it'll give you some good reference. Yeah, those were a little nasty. That light comes right out. See that light there? That comes right out. Just want to be careful, so I just have to kind of press that in and push, press that in and push. You can see it's dirty in there, but they're dirty inside. There it goes, okay, comes right out. And these reflectors are nasty, so we're just going to clean these up a little bit, clean everything up, put them back on. And uh, that'll finish up the cleaning on it. Yeah, that's better. I mean, it's not perfect, but look, it's not filthy and dull in there. You could polish these too. A little bit of uh, a buffing wheel and a bit of a polishing compound. They'll actually come up nice. You could polish the whole thing if you wanted to do that. But we're going to take the shortcut next.
Okay, guys, don't forget to check out the companion videos. Uh, one of them is, you know, kind of cool how to go over the deck and sort of rebuild the deck and get it mint and sweet and deal with the bearings, relube the bearings, everything on a budget. Um, also, I changed out the belt, the uh, main drive belt, the smaller one, the shorter one that goes to the CV. Uh, probably put those together. I mean, I, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but then, you know, you got the carburetor, the valves on that engine. Uh, so they're all going to be companion videos, separate videos, most likely. And I'll release them after this uh, as I'm ready to release them. And, and I'll go back and I'll put the links to them in the main body uh, of this video. Probably cross-link them and whatever eventually over time. So don't forget to check that out. Um, all of this done on a budget. Uh, keep in mind, guys, that I could make uh, not, only, not only this machine look mint, but I could actually make it mint. But then I would be refurbishing the entire machine. And that's not the point of this exercise. And a lot of times you can't do that. You're trying to sell a machine. You don't want to make the machine so perfect because if you do, you'll spend so much time on it, you'll never get that money back. And at some point, either they go to another mechanic or they come back to you a couple of years later for a repair, right? And that's the best case scenario. With all the stuff that I do, guys, that is really the undercurrent. I think one of the last videos, uh, one of the fellows mentioned, why don't you do it right and make it perfect and do this? And, because you can't, right? A lot of times you can't. Now, if somebody is coming to you and paying you, right, to make something mint and perfect, and they're going to pay that extra dollar and they want it absolutely that way, by all means, you pull out every stop uh, to whatever skill set you have as a mechanic. But that's, especially here, you know, and nowadays people don't really have the money. There is a point at which where you, you get the equipment running to solve the problem for the customer however they're using it and they want to try to put that cost out over time they may not mind coming back if they trust you and they like you and they know you're basically doing a good job they'll come back over time and they'll continue to do repairs with you um, and you know if you want to start to do this for you for those of you that may want to start to do this for a side job or for a living you know you want to be upfront with with your customers in that regard right you can't fix everything all at once that's a restoration and if you do that, that's that's money. So yeah, you could do that. They have to be aware that that's, and then of course it would sit in your shop that much longer. And usually they need it. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching this one. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. It's a beautiful machine. And it actually, by the way, it actually went to the Bahamas. It's on its way to the Bahamas. Yeah, a fellow came here and uh, he wanted to donate it to something going on over there, a church or whatever it is. And so hopefully there's good mechanics down there because it's still gonna need some work. It's not perfect.